In this video, we're going to have a look at extracting data from an HTML table and bringing it into Microsoft Excel. So for this example, I have a table outlining the various boroughs in New York City and their population estimates, uh, their gross domestic product, land area, density. Uh, and I want to bring this table into Microsoft Excel so I can use some of this data in Excel. Uh, so this is just an HTML file, of course. This could be stored locally or on the web. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to take it directly from the web, but I'll let you know how to do it locally as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is just copy the URL, and we're going to go over to Microsoft Excel. Now, I will note that at this time, as far as I know, this does not work on the Mac version of Microsoft Excel. I do know that they are working on implementing this functionality in the Mac version. So if by the time you see this video, it's a couple years past, uh, definitely see if it's available in the Mac version, if you have the latest version of Microsoft Excel. And if it's not available, you may even be able to open the resulting file and have it update on the Mac side, because I believe they've implemented some of the query stuff, just the UI isn't quite there yet. Okay, so now that we're on the Data tab in Microsoft Excel, we can go ahead and go to Get Data. And if you did have the file stored locally, you'll go from file and then actually do from an XML file. And it should pull you up the same interface. In this case, I want the data to be directly from the web. So I'm just going to go from other sources and from web. In this case, I could just paste the URL. And since we don't need to do any authentication, basic is fine. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to do some analysis of the file. And it comes up with a list of various tables in the file. So the one I want is called boroughs, but you might have to check the other tables and just see what they look like. So that one's called boroughs. And here's the table here. Now it doesn't look quite perfect. If we go back to the table, um, it's a little confusing because it's got this full header thing. So Excel's duplicated that across all the rows because it's trying to get a consistent amount of columns and rows. Uh, so it's just duplicated that. I believe it's duplicated this jurisdiction. Maybe. Yeah, it's a little weird. So, but that is the table. So we're going to go ahead and go transform data. You could load it directly in if this looked exactly like how you wanted it, but we're going to go to transform data. <clears throat> It's going to pop in this query editor. Now, if you did go ahead and load it in directly, you could also make these changes directly in Excel. The only problem with that is that if you have a web source and you're going to be updating it, by doing it this way, it will make these changes every time. So the table should import correctly every time. You won't have to redo these steps. So at this point, I can actually just choose to remove this column. This was just the header. It's it's this portion here. I don't actually need that information. So I can just go ahead and remove that column. So I'm going to remove that column. After this, I want all of these columns. So this all looks OK. Uh, the, the titles here are fairly accurate, so that's OK. But we have some headers actually looking like they're rows in our data. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Remove Rows, Remove Top Rows, and remove those two rows. And so unfortunately, this is just an example of one, a couple of modifications you might need to do to make the table, uh, you know, sort of fit your data to the Excel table. But uh, there may be other modifications. But just keep in mind that you can you can remove columns, you can remove rows. There's other transformation stuff available here. You can transpose, meaning switching rows and columns. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do. Uh, you can even add columns here right uh, doing statistics etc so there's a lot of changes you can do so just keep that in mind you can add columns uh, this is a very powerful editor so definitely refer to the documentation and do a bit of googling to figure out if there's more significant modifications you can do in my case the data is quite neatly laid out so it's fairly simple I just want to remove those columns and remove top rows and you'll see that Excel tracks those steps so again if I update that information from the web page, then it will do these steps again 
to fit the data back into Excel. So that's why we do it in this query editor as opposed to just doing it after an Excel. But you could do it after an Excel too if you know you're only going to import the data one time. So with that being said, I'm going to close and load. And it's going to load in this table. It does a quick getting data there. And it pops that in there. Okay. Uh, so now that data is there. If you're happy with that, you could stop right there. I'm going to go to query. Um, and I just wanted to show you a few of the options here. So if we go to properties, we have the option to enable background refresh. We have the opportunity to disable refreshing this connection on refresh all. Uh, we can refresh it every certain number of minutes and we can also refresh when opening the file. So if this is data on the web that's going to be changing frequently, um, then you do have those ability to make those refresh options. Uh, check those off so that it updates. Okay, and so with that, our data is available in Excel. It works just like any other uh, Excel table. We can go ahead and change the table design, add a total row, do all of those sort of fun things that we would do with any other Excel table. All right, I hope you guys have found this video helpful. This has been Ryan on the Syntax Byte, and I will see you in the next video.